said, it's fascinating how when it comes to basketball and coaching of basketball, napaka-passionate natin and napaka-taas ng standards natin. You know, like, uh, you know, it's not easy to qualify for the FIBA World Cup. Nandun tayo sa Indonesia, eh, hindi niya nga wala sa games because they couldn't qualify for it. So, hindi siya automatic qualification. You have to really fight for that. And Philippines is still one of the best teams in Asia at least, you know. Uh, although I think, you know, I mean, look at it. Both Dominican Republic and Italy did pretty well, no? And they have made it to the next round. So that, that tells you, you know, us keeping those fights close, uh, it means something. It means something. So ito, uh, uh, <coughs> Sorry about that. Sabi nito ni Coach Chot Reyes, ito, bastos, brutal. Yun daw yung... Um, yun daw yung uh, responses sa kanya. O, tignan, mahal na mahal namin kayo kahit uh, gaganyan. <laughs> Tayo go. Ito, ito, ito. Pag-usapan natin yan. So, ito ah. Sa, da, kay, for Coach Reyes, medyo unfair na. And unfair na yung mga comments, binabasta sa So, after announcing his intention to step down as Gilas coach, sabi ni Chot, it's just been brutal. You all know you're part of it, right? It's just been brutal. Never mind on me, but on my family, on my loved ones. Preposition. It's just brutal, no? I will never turn my back to serving my country, but there's a point where I just need to think about my health and my family's health as well. I mean, in fairness, I mean, you could see the effort, uh, yung pressure, and in sorry, boss, MVP says, Chot Reyes apologized for Gilas Filipinas uh, disappointment, and of course, accordingly, he's stepping aside as Gilas Filipinas wraps, uh, wrapped up its FIBA World Cup run. Of course, hindi pa tapos ang FIBA World Cup. Which is interesting because I'm watching the FIBA World Cup are falling rather the FIBA World Cup because uh, cable. Because for me, ah, nata- nakita niyo, natalong US, di ba? Uh, and uh, sa Lithuania, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, one thing we noticed dito sa FIBA World Cup is napaka ganda ng performance ng mga Eastern European countries. Even yung mga late like Montenegro. The larger ones, or semi-larger ones, or more known ones, whether it's Lithuania, Latvia, Slovenia, of course, Luka, I think, is the best player out there ever, at least, uh, well, best player in our time, at least, in, in this years. So if you look at Slovenia, Lithuania, uh, Latvia, Montenegro, a lot of these countries are, are easily standing up, and in the case of U.S., they, they even beat the superpowers. Greece, wala na. Spain, mm, yung defending champions. U.S. natalo ng Lithuania. So I think if you look at dito sa FIBA World Cup, it might give you an idea about where we should go. Because actually as of now, uh, ito po yung mga six candidates na tinitignan ng samahang basketball ng Pilipinas, reportedly, uh, as a candidate to replace Chot Reyes. One is Tab Baldwin. I think a lot have been uh, talking about him. Nenad Vocinic. Raj Toroman, Charles Tu, Tim Cohn, Jimmy Alapag, and Norman Black. Now, my sense is, of course, there are at least two, si Toroman and Vucinic, na Eastern European. Uh, in the case of Toroman, of course, we know back in the day, he played a very important role in the success of two Asian teams. Not one, but at least two Asian teams, first in Iran. And that helped Iran actually to win back-to-back championship in Asia. And of course, the dominance of Iran in Asia effectively came to an end uh, in this World Cup where I think there was they were the worst performing Asian country, even though they were ranked second just after Australia, since biglang sinama ang Australia sa region natin. So that era of hegemon is over. Also, legends like Hamid Hadadi also um, uh, just resigned, uh, effectively retired na. So Iran has to rebuild this team, but they have some very, very good young players up and coming around race, including one 18-year-old who's who, who's very much in contention to go to NBA after his stint in France. So Iran is working on that, but Toroman played a very important role behind the rise of Iran, but also in the also Philippines. Uh, I think the years that he was in, in charge of the Philippines really brought some sort of discipline and purpose to us. The thing as it to some Eastern European countries is that well, first of all, their coaches are not super mahal and overrated, like, I don't know, American coaches or some, I don't know, Western European coaches well, or Western coaches. No, I mean, uh, I, I don't think they're that expensive. We offer we, we afforded them in the past, and I think we can still afford them. The second thing is, 
they're good in tactics, right? Because yung Eastern European teams individually, I mean, Luka is fantastic and all, but but they don't have the kind of athleticism, explosiveness that we see with NBA players and also like Jordan Clarkson type of players. But there's a lot of reliance on long shots, grabbing mga three-point shots nila, yung mga shooting techniques in Lithuania, Latvia, amazing. And then, oh, oh, and then, of course, there's tactics. There's tactics. How you spread the burden. You don't over-rely on one player. So, like we did in the case of Jordan Clarkson, offense to others. I mean, it's very clear. And then you maximize the strengths of each of the players, or a bench and, and, and the first five, whatever. And at the same time, you make sure your weaknesses can be more than compensated by teamwork. So, dito talaga, sa tingin ko, magaling talaga mga Eastern Europeans. And I think... Uh, having an Eastern European coach, uh, next coach, is something I'm very, very much interested. In fact, there's an article right now about possible replacements. Well, a, a lot, you know, there's a lot, also a lot of concern about whether anyone is willing to step up and take over FIBA, uh, Gilas, Pilipinas. Kasi medyo mahal, mahirap tong trabaho na to eh. It's a very difficult job. And there's a lot of expectations. Kaya nga sabi ko, yun yung interesting sa atin eh. So the National Basketball Federation is not expected to make an announcement on the Philippine men's basketball team's new coach until after the FIBA. So this is what we already knew before pa, di ba? Uh, the FIBA work ends on September 10, while basketball action in the Asian Games in China will open on September 26. So Toroman looks like an option so far. Gilas deputy coach Tim Cohen has said that he's not interested in taking over as head coach for the Philippines. So we... So will any other former Philippine team coach be resi uh, resigning? So I, I said, Toroman, I think, is one very good one who handled the Philippine team from the Gilas, uh, is back in Manila. So it looks like Toroman could be one of the top ones. The Ser Oh, by the way, I didn't mention Serbia also performed pretty well. The Serbian coach said he's focused on his work as consultant for Converge in the PBA and College of St. Benil in the NCA, but might consider helping out the Philippine team again. However, he stressed that nobody has approached him about getting back on board with the BSP. Sabi niya, I was not thinking that I can be the next coach of Gilas. That was out of my mind. I'm just focusing on the things that I'm doing right now. All right. So, Toroman is, looks like another option. Uh, and then, of course, we're also looking at people like Justin Brownlee. He's set to rejoin Gilas no? uh, to help us with the Asian Games. Dito sa Hangzhou. Uh, by the way, yung coach natin ng cycling sa Hangzhou, nakita natin yata dun sa flight natin, ha? Good luck din sa inyo. Yeah, so uh, let's see. Let's see. So it looks like, I mean, personally, if not Toroman, someone of his caliber, someone with kind of an Eastern European background, I think would be perfect for the Philippines because we already have that athleticism, explosiveness that we see uh, in teams like America or Australia or, or, or even uh, Argentina at some point uh, and Dominican Republic. But what we really work on, what we need is tactics, techniques. And I think really Eastern Europeans are super in that. I mean... I won't be surprised that this year my some millennialities are Eastern European or at least on the semi-finals we might see multiple Eastern European countries there, post-Soviet bloc, whatever, however you want to put them. So again, uh, Tab Baldwin, Vocinich, Toroman, Charles Chu, Tim Cohn, Jimmy Alapag, Norman Black. Ito yung mga kinoconsider nila. Pero ako for me, uh, to be honest, uh, sana yung main coach natin yung coach ng hit, di ba? Uh, at saka yung uh, ngayon, isa sa mga coaching staff sa US team because... You know, I, I hope you more Philippine Americans in the NBA, especially you know who they who have done very very well at the highest levels. Kahit one two years lang sila sa Pilipinas sana, kind of give back naman to the other country. I mean, you come back here as heroes, etc. You talk about your Filipino heritage and all of that. Siguro naman give a year or two. No, give a year or two uh sa sa Pilipinas until we we kind of get back into groove we get back to to confidence so I definitely see Eric Spolstra no for me is one interesting person I mean I know I know this is a binyo na parang masyadong ano mataas yung ating uh, expectations or ano but I mean this guy has proven himself at the highest levels already right with the Miami Heat and all of that and he's He's half Pinoy, he's very strongly, at least he says he's strongly steep in his Filipino identity. So, I mean, how I wish that one day people like him, no? Yung mga ibang Filipino-American. I hope hindi nila ma-discover ang Pilipinas pag medyo laos na yung career. Yung talaga, <laughs> I hope while they're kind of still at their peak or close to their peak, you know, they come back and help the Philippines in whatever capacity. And and for me, Eric Spolstra, it would be perfect for the Philippines, to be honest. I know medyo... Mahirap uh, 
Pero libre naman mangarap eh. But I, I hope someone like him, no? Uh, there's a Pinoy heritage. There's a Pinoy con- connection. That we always talk about him as the first Asian American. Blah, blah, blah. This, blah, blah, blah. That. Pero sana naman, di ba? Mag-contribute. Kasi clearly, may vacuum tayo ng leadership and coaching. And I really feel for for Chot Reyes. I mean, I have my own concerns with him and all. Uh, and about the coaching and all of that. But in fairness to the guy, you know, like, looks like not many people are lining up to get the job or the ones that we want to take the job are having second thoughts for whatever reason because they feel the expectation is too high um, compared to what can be delivered or even deliverables in the short run. But that's my point. Sana naman we get someone like Eric Spolstrom or for me, at least in the meantime, let's get some of these Eastern European coaches who are doing a fantastic, fantastic job. Jimmy Alapag, uh, did Jimmy also go to NBA recently, right? To to help out. Maybe he also can be there in the mix. But but you know, like we really need gold standard coaches or at least silver standard coaches to get the ball rolling, to get the kind of respect, to get the kind of groove. Because again, as I said, yes, disappointing if you just look at the raw record, what, four one. But if you look at how close we kept it with Italy and with Dominican Republic compared to how Tina Tambahan dying of 30, 40, 50 points you mga ganitong team, especially like Italy back in 2019. You will be hopeful about where the Philippines is going. You'll, you'll have more confidence about the Philippines doing better, especially as Kai Soto gets into groove. Hopefully, we'll have more of Jordan Clarkson in other games, other big games. So hopefully, we, we make it to Olympics so that we can have Jordan Clarkson there. And then Edu, I think he was definitely, definitely the, the breakout star. And then, of course, Ramos also did fantastic. So we have many, many very good players, but we need the right coaches, the coaches that bring confidence, but coaches who can also speak their mind and said, oh, what kayo masakagad, what Shadow harsh, give us some time. We need to get into groove, we need to build this up, etc. And you guys, since I've been sure, major machado expectation that as a coach is not as of this time, we're too passionate about it in the same way. Na ambaba na expectation mo na to pag dadi sa mga political leaders natin. So, sana makakaran ng balance. Sana we're a little bit more demanding in terms of the kind of leaders we elect into office, in, in, especially at the highest levels. At the same time, perhaps a little bit of realism, but at the same time. It doesn't hurt if we try to get people like Eric Spolstra, etc., down the road to, uh, to come to the Philippines. I think if we do well, let's say like, well, let's get a good coach, whether it's Jimmy Alapag or we get some great uh, Eastern European coach, we make it to the highest level, I don't know, win an Asian championship, make, make a win or two in the Olympics and some of this big game, maybe then we can get the attention of Eric Spolstra. He's still very young and I think he'll still be around for quite some time, God willing. So hopefully we can get those kinds of coaches with Filipino heritage operating in the NBA. I think Jimmy Alapag is in, in that direction also now. Then work it from there. Build it from there. Build it from there. All right? Thank you very much, mga kameta. I hope you appreciated our discussions today. I, as you see, medyo uh, slightly ano tayo, under the weather tayo, but uh, you know how passionate we are about the Philippines. Gano ka natin kamahalang Pilipinas. And for everything I say about basketball, etc., for me, the fact that the Filipino people love this sports, that it matters to the Filipino people, then it matters to me. Even though I'm I'm more a football guy for for all the reasons I explained to you guys, right? Um, but I but at the same time, hopefully wag natin kalimutan yung mga ibang successes din natin. Uh, one win against China was important. It was very sweet. Yung ibang senador jan kung ano nung pinagagawa. But I hope in the meantime we don't forget about other athletes who are actually delivering at the highest highest levels. And they're not getting the kind of attention that they deserve uh, and commensurate dun sa kanilang success. That's, that's very, very important. Very, very important that we give the attention. So just last night, among 1 a.m. or something, na share natin. Ito si EJ Obiena, no? Nanalo siya ng gold medal. Gold medal. Ito na, back siya sa number two. Yun nga, kasi nakasabayan niyo isang goat eh. Pero yun nga eh, like, sana naman we also give more resources. I mean, how much... I mean, natin, mga kanyang ginastos, binayaran, I mean, sa pagka, di ba, I've been told na medyo, ano, pag naglaro ka sa gilas or something, especially kung nasa NBA car, gan, hmm. I mean, like, just think about the amount of money and resources we put into FIBA World Cup, the amount of resources we we, we put, the amount of attention, love, whatever, you know, na mga nagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagag
international competition. He's at least number two in the world right now. And he would have been and he would have been a world champion had he had he not been siguro kasabay ng isang goat. But but I mean but EJ Obin is still going for it. And, and and I'm glad that there are at least some people like I know the Ayalas who are supporting him. Some of these uh uh, folks are stepping up to the plate, but sana naman sa ating bansa, we give more support, more attention, commensurate dun sa success na nakakuha natin. Because yung basketball, for one, di ba? Tingnan nyo naman ang amount of resources we put into it. All the sweet yung victory. Um, single victory. But sana, we also, you know, pay more attention to the EJ Obienas of this world, right? And EJ Obiena actually is the lucky one because he still got some level of, of, of scrutiny. Some, he has good social media presence. Napapansin natin dyan. But I know there's so many na magaling. Softball, baseball, uh, well, weightlifting, at least medyo on the, on the map na tayo. Up and coming, uh, you know, boxers. Football natin, at least, you know, no choice. Like, we had to pay attention like first world cup pala may panalo na kaagad diba like so you can see the ROI is very high on these sports and it just hopefully just become more invested in the sports and more appreciative of the sports and who knows the Philippines could be a much more well-rounded globally competitive sporting nation way more than uh, we are today on that note thank you very much and god bless <coughs> sorry ayan na magpahinga na tayo thank you very much and god bless guys or wait lang mag Sige, mag-thank you muna tayo. Nasaan na tayo? Nasaan na? Ayan na, hilo-hilo na. Ayan, thank you very much. Ayan na na, ay mga... Ano natin? Noy Mitzablate, Benvenido Choi. Salamat, salamat. Kay JC uh, Sen- Cesneros. Ayan. Kay, kay Mom Jocelyn Lumbera, as always. Thank you very much. Kay Madrigal Heya. Kay Riz Ani. Kay Mom Edna Lonan. Thank you very much. Cook Jihan. Yeah, marami nagmamahal sa atin. Mira Minalov, thank you so much. Yes, don't worry, magpapahinga na tayo. Artur Cortezano, yeah. Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you very much also dito sa kabila. Sa YouTube for everyone joining us. Kay Kenneth Colminar, kay John Miranda, kay Mom Victoria, kay, kay Luz, kay DLC. Thank you very much. God bless and guys, uh, talk to you soon.